And while it's never happened before, a former civil defense official tells us a mistake like what we saw today is easy to make with the current systems in place. Let's go to Sam Spangler now for more. Sam. Well, Bridget, Ed Teixeira was the vice director of civil defense until 2011. He thinks the system is ripe for an accident like today's false alarm. It's system, systemically, it's very, very easy to sound the sirens. It's all touchscreen control. Similar to the false missile alert drop down menu, Teixeira remembers a simple system. Just picture a software system on a screen, uh, picture a green button, a red button, and basically procedures like that, very, very simple, very visual, and basically you're just using your finger or your mouse click to make sure you're hitting the right button to make sure the sirens are sounded. Teixeira says that he's not aware of software available for a training-only program. He says with the situation what it is, training properly is very important. Training, training, training. Every month when you go through the uh, outdoor siren warning test, it's a good time also to get people uh, proficient before that test is made and at the same time uh, supervisors watching how these are controlled. Civil Defense and the Emergency Management Agency are also in control of the sirens. So why does each county's police department also have access? For a couple of reasons. One, uh, there are 24-7 operation. I don't think all the counties are 24-7. And so the police department has got to be in a position to warn the public when they see a threat that may affect our people. Now with this coming from Oahu, Teixeira also hypothesized why Kahului was included in the false alarm. He says the state recently made a move over to a satellite system to signal the outdoor sirens, which could have malfunctioned. Now we'll be following up to find out if that was really the case.